Hey folks, John with Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in the computer business. So, I promised you guys another heavyweight contender for our Pepperball Hall of Fame. And man, have I got one for you this time. It is nasty. Now, uh, before we do that, I want to let you guys know the uh, podcast. It looks like it is coming up very, 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 very soon. Uh, Paul and I have been talking. In fact, i got to give him a call again tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll have this thing set up by next week. Crossing fingers. we got a lot of good stuff planned for you guys. So, I'll let you know on that one. In the meantime, let's check out this interesting thing. Here we go. All right, guys. You're zeroed out. That just burnt right into that platform. So this is, for those who don't know, Stronghold Legend. Time to make a pie. Here we go. What I wanted to do from the first time I opened up that VIC-20 and started banging out programs. Alright guys, so just like in the world of cars, you've got your, uh, your upper echelon cars. You know, everybody's going to know the Lamborghinis and the Ferraris and all that kind of thing. Um, when you get into these relatively expensive pepper ball guns, and I'm talking about a price break range anywhere between $300 to $500 on the pistols, um, those are what I consider pretty high end because they're expensive. They just are. Um, this is actually what I would consider one of the top end, and I'll tell you why. This one is used by a lot of police departments all over the country, um, and it's got some features that I both like and dislike just based on reading it, but I haven't even cracked this open yet. So we're all gonna do that together and take a look and see what we get in this box. So, let's move this over here to Stumpy and take a look at the box. Guys, I gotta tell you, that thing is heavy. And I mean heavy, it's got some weight to it. That is heavier than any of the ones we've tested so far. All right, opening this up here, all right. Yeah, the um, I love testing these heavy ones. And oh guys, if I ever got something cool for you, Wait till you see what we're firing at the test today. That's actually very, very cool. So, all right. And no making fun of it. I, this is my first attempt at something interesting. All right, open her up. And we are met with our warning labels. And we are met with what looks like a barrel cleaner. You got some oil in there. Now, that's actually pretty cool. By the way, Heads up and thanks shout out to all of the people that pointed out that I need to be putting a little bit of this oil on the tip of the uh, uh, cartridges when they go in. Uh, that's actually a pretty good idea, guys, so keep that in mind. Wow, look at that thing, guys. Holy cow, I hope Stumpy's doing that justice. That is huge. Now, this thing has a couple of very interesting functions to it. Now, on the burner, for instance, and the salt supply, uh, you guys will recall that you loaded the uh, CO2 cartridges in from the front nozzle down. Um, these actually have the CO2 cartridge built into the magazine that holds the round. I, I don't know how I feel about this yet. We're gonna find out as we go. But let's open this up and take this out and take a look at this. Holy cow, guys. Jeez, uh, I hope Stumpy is getting an idea of how big that base is. I mean, that thing is huge. And I'll give you a little view down here. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice on Stumpy, and I will point this out right here. This has got what looks like a pressure release valve right here. That is actually a valve that will allow you to adjust how much air is coming out with each shot to make your shots faster and hit harder. Um, however, there is a sweet spot. And uh, if you go over that sweet spot, you'll end up rupturing your pepper balls inside the weapon, and you definitely don't want to do that. So it's kind of trial and error. From everything I read, it's about one and a half twists on this clockwise that will actually allow it to have enough velocity to just blast whatever you're shooting, but not destroy your uh, the pepper balls in here. So let's take a good look at the weapon here. And as you can see, this actually has the safety on the side. I'm not super fond of that, guys. You guys know I kind of like that double trigger safety. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's got a magazine drop here, just like any other one. And as you can see, it comes with two magazines, which is actually pretty cool, too. All right. Before I go any further on this, one thing that I don't like, all right, um, the cartridge is held in the magazine. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and put one of the CO2 cartridges in here real quick. Um, Guys, they use the same 8-gram cartridges, the exact same one that the burner uses. Now, there is a big difference. Okay, now, now that we've sourced these and those cartridges are cheap to find and all that, it's not such a big deal. Um, it's about velocity and how many shots you can get. However, 
This doesn't matter with this weapon because it is designed to give you exactly six shots out of this on one cartridge, period. That means you are getting all of your velocity, all of your punch out of each shot on one cartridge. Then you simply swap the magazine. That's the whole concept. Um, there is one other thing that I'm not super fond of. We'll get to that here in just a second. But let's load up a cartridge, shall we? Which is fine. Uh, now, granted, and one other thing in here, guys, if you look in this box, there's nothing else in the box. You get two magazines, and you get the launcher and this little miscellaneous bag. But there are no pepper balls. There are no solid core balls. There are no other accessories that come with this. That's a little annoying. Not insurmountable, all right? So let's go through this. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our 8-gram cartridges. All right, we're going to take our magazine, and on the bottom of the magazine, you've got a screw, a thumb screw, that you unfold and unscrew, like so. All right, and you guys can see in there, this is where the screw is coming down. We take our, magazine, our cartridge, our CO2 cartridge nozzle up and insert it in. And what you want to do is, is you want to secure this just snug. You don't want to make that super tight. And then you want to close this down. Now, that's very important because this is how you store it. Unlike the Berna and unlike the salt supply and unlike any other weapon we've tested so far, this is the way that you're going to actually puncture that cylinder. You have to crank it down in order to puncture the cylinder once it's in the weapon. Um, that's a little annoying, but once again, guys, we're going to hold judgment until we get this on the range and see how it fires, all right? So, at this point, we've got that in there. Now, the other thing, like I said, this did not come with is any accessories. So, what we're going to do is we're going to fire with some of those solid rubber steel core balls that we used last time. All right, so we're going to load this up. And I did have one other of the inert pepper ball rounds, the 68 caliber. We'll throw that one in there, too, on top. So, in order to load this up, it's just like any other magazine. You simply push down, push down. There you go. Now you can, guys, you can pull this down and drag it down and lock it if you want to do it that way. For me, I'm just going to load it up normally though. That's three, four, five, and six. All right? So we've got six rounds in there. And as you can see, you can actually see it in here. Okay? From there, we're going to push it into the weapon. Now remember, until you charge this, you are not actually charging the weapon. Okay? So we're going to put it in. And now it's ready to fire. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and load up a second cartridge and get it ready because, like I said, we're going to get five out of that, and that's all we're going to get. We're going to reposition this camera. You know the range. Shooting down, and I want to show you the new thing we're shooting at. No laughing. Here we go. All right, guys. So as you can see, we're actually a little further away than we were before. I moved the table back here so we could get even more distance. And given the fact that I have no idea what kind of velocity we're going to get out of this thing, I wanted to make absolutely sure that we had enough range. With six rounds, you, you know, your guess is as good as mine. We're going to find out. Now, you'll also notice down there we are now shooting a plastic mannequin that has got a 3D printed skull on top of it. Now, we're doing this for two reasons. The first reason is because this is a harder surface. So I'm thinking for future videos and the head-to-head -head that I'm planning with these three bad boys, I want to be able to have clothing on the mannequin to uh, simulate that uh, uh, real heavy padding if you were firing at something in wintertime. As far as the skull, it's actually a, a, a 3D print that I did at 40% infill density. That stuff's hard, so I'm curious to see what it does to that as well. So, without further ado, let's go ahead. We're going to make sure our weapon is on safety. We're going to twist this. And as you heard it click, fold this back down. And now, now your weapon is ready to fire, all right? So we're going to put it on fire, and we are ready to go. So first shot, let's just aim center mass. Now, this is going to be our, the first shot's our pepper ball. Oh, and one of the things, guys, I want to show you, I'm going to put it back on safety. Right here, you've got a little dot that shows you if you've got a round loaded, all right? So we're going to put it back on fire. We're going to aim center mass on this one. Everybody see the cloud? That was crazy. All right, now, for the next round, that one I knew was going to explode. For the next rounds, what I'm going to do is we're going to make sure we're wearing our safety glasses because that one wasn't going to bounce. This one very well could be. Here we go. All right, guys, got our cool guy glasses on over here. All right, we're going to take the same shots. We're going center mass. And as you guys saw, that hit center mass. It went exactly where I put the round. All right, so we're putting it on fire. And let's give this a shot. Hopefully, you guys are getting a good angle of this. Yeah, you are. Okay, here we go. All 
All right, guys, so as you can see, that thing hit solid as a rock. Now, we did not rupture that surface, but those mannequins, that is a very, very solid plastic. It's not going to. So what we're gonna do is, on our next one, I'm gonna take the first two shots at the skull, and then I'm gonna turn it sideways so that we get a nice flat surface, because I do wanna see what kind of impact we've got. So, our new magazine is in. We're going to charge it. You guys hear that click? That indicates it's charged. And then we're going to put it back on fire, and we're gonna take our shot at the skull. Guys, I don't know if you're seeing that. <laughs> no, you know what? That's not going to do it justice. Hold on a minute. And we're not going to do any kind of camera magic here. I want to show you guys something. Hold on. I intentionally mounted this on Velcro so that we could pull it off. Guys, look at this. Look how deeply that embedded. This sheared off the entire side. So what I'm gonna do is, just for test purposes, I'm gonna load up another magazine with a solid core. We're gonna turn this sideways and I'm gonna see if we can hit dead center here and see what it does. Hang on a second. All right guys, so here we go. As you can see, I've got the skull mounted sideways now. We're gonna go ahead and put our rounds in. We're going to make sure we're on safety, guys. That's incredibly important. You don't wanna do this off safety. Crank this down one time. Here it click. All right, and we're gonna take our shot at that skull, all right? And here we go. Make sure you guys are getting a good view. Okay, here we go. Jeez. All right, let's go take a look at it. Oh, by the way, I know somebody's gonna ask this. What happens if you drop the magazine after firing the five rounds? Um, that's kind of an important thing too, right? Because you still have a little bit of charge in there even though it's not full. Listen, all right, so you hear it discharge that last little bit. That's what it does if you do that. Now, I don't know how much pressure is left in here, but not much, you guys can hear it, that's it. So it's like, it's loose in there. All right, well, let me go down here and grab this real quick and then we're gonna see what it did to this head. And you know what, once again, no movie magic. I'm gonna go do this live. You guys are gonna see this, hold on a second. By the way, I, I have got to know, and this is going to be in the head to head to head to head to head. I got to know if the uh, uh, the burner is going to do the same thing, and it should. But this velocity is pretty much off the charts. Hold on a minute. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to have to print another skull. Are you guys seeing this? That's 40% infill, and you can see those, that was actually two on top of each other. So to say that it's accurate, uh, yeah, slightly. This one ripped right through the nose. Wow. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to print another skull, guys. That was pretty bad. But you know what? It makes a good target to shoot at because it's a rounded surface, so I wanted to see what it would do. And by the way, this is no joke, guys. This is solid. It's very, very hard. All right, one more test, and I'll be right back with you. All right, guys, for this test, what I want to do is the weapon is not loaded. I've got the balls in the magazine, but I do not have the CO2 cartridge. And you know, you guys remember one of the things that annoyed me the most on the supply was that when you would drop that magazine and you had rounds in it, that the balls would drop out. And I am actually curious about that. So here we're going to know. I'm going to insert the cartridge here. All right, up into the weapon. And now I'm going to drop the magazine and let's see if any of the balls come out. Well, I can already tell they are, guys. I can hear them clicking. Yeah, look at that. So, uh, this kind of does the exact same thing that the other one does. That's a little bit annoying. Um, okay, and if you look up in here, you guys can actually see there is still one round in there. So it looks like it locks the first one in, but then the next one just kind of falls out. Oh, and that came out too. So it's not in there super tight. Um, that's a little annoying, but not an insurmountable thing. So, uh, you know what, since we have the skull down there, one more mag. Here we go. All right, one more mag. Here we go, guys. Let's get this. Now, what we're going to do is we're not going to change anything at all down there. So we still have the same skull up there. Um, by the way, for those who are wondering, yes, there were a couple of ricochets off that stuff. I wasn't kidding when I said that that stuff is hard. And I wanted to shoot against something hard to see what it would actually do. So that's kind of important. So, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to load in our magazine. We're going to put her on to safety still. Yeah, we're still on safety. We're going to charge it. Here it click. All right, put it on to fire, 
And let's give us some skull action. Okay, that shot, we're gonna stop right there. I gotta show you this, hold on a minute, hang on. <laughs> that last shot, guys, went straight through the nose and embedded in the head. Look at this thing. See how deep those are? Yeah, it's definitely no joke. All right, well, let me go ahead and get this all cleaned up, guys. We'll go back into the studio in there. And I want to talk to you about a couple things that I found on this one. Here we go. So here are a couple things I discovered about this. Um, and I, 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 I did a little bit of testing off camera, guys, to verify this before I actually brought this back to you. Um, the sweet spot on this turn, when you get this, you actually want to adjust it one full turn. Um, that was able to actually not puncture, but seriously dent that plastic mannequin and that thing is solid it's not it's not a hollow mannequin it's a solid plastic mannequin um, and it weighs quite a bit when i did that also it would literally go completely through that skull that we printed um, it's given me a couple other ideas as far as things i'm going to print for us to shoot because if i print a higher density we'll be able to get a real good impact feel for what that thing is doing um, now i did want to know one thing when you drop that magazine you guys heard it go tss, like it was releasing it wasn't releasing pressure off of this, it was releasing pressure out of the weapon. So, you still had a couple shots left in here, and when I say a couple guys, maybe one half velocity, but it literally uses all of its power on those first six shots. That's kinda cool, little annoying at the same time because you only get six shots, then you gotta reload, then you gotta twist it, then you gotta aim and fire. Yeah, practicality maybe you know I mean at the end of the day I guess the goal is uh, you want to make sure that you hit what you're firing at and of course if you're firing those pepper ball rounds odds are you're going to so it is a fantastic weapon guys fantastic I cannot wait to head to head this against the burna I can already tell you guys this fires harder than the burna um, the burna is as far as accuracy is pretty close the burna might actually be a little more accurate than this um, these sites are adjustable a little bit left and right, but not much up and down, and that is a problem. So you're going to be able to get a little of this, but you're going to have to do a little bit of Kentucky windage and aim a little under your target because it does tend to pull up a tiny bit. Um, other than that, it's a great weapon. It really is. Um, I could definitely see using this. Of course, they sell an entire range of accessories from this, um, from standard holsters to uh, 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 actual service holsters, uh, shoulder mounts, everything. I mean, it's got a whole range of stuff for it. Um, you also have a, a the barrel up here, which you can actually adjust it, tactical stuff to. Uh, down to the trigger, you've got a small rail down here for a laser sight. A whole, a whole myriad of things you can actually do with it. So it is very high end. In fact, I would say from a construction standpoint, it's probably the best one we've tested so far. And you guys can see, I'm hoping you can take a look at that and see, my hand is huge and it, it is it literally having to hold that. It's pretty darn solid. Um, now, I know that in the beginning of this video, we had a couple issues with Stumpy's audio. I apologize for that. That is totally my fault. Um, apparently, Stumpy decided to run out of batteries on me with no notification. It went from full to dead, and I didn't get anything on here except looking over, and it was gone. So, my apologies for that. Uh, when we do the head to head to head to head to head, head to head, 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 and all everything else we bring out, um, we'll be getting close-ups of all these one more time, so don't worry about that. Um, I have another contender coming up. This one I'm kind of excited about because it's actually heavily modifiable. Um, and I think you'll get a kick out of that one. So stay tuned for it. We will be doing the podcast shortly. Don't miss that. We have a couple of really cool things in store for you guys. And Paul and I are such different personalities that I have a crazy suspicion that we're always going to have something that entertains somebody out there. Have a great week, guys, and a fantastic weekend. We will see you later. Bye-bye.